What I want to do in this video is clarify some of the notation that I've been using in regards to regressions. And in particular, we're going to focus on the difference between the sample regression and a population regression. And just to think about that, so let me draw let me draw a some data points. And just for fun, let's make it a little bit more real world. Let's say that each of these points represent how much on the x-axis we'll say how much a stock index changed. So let's say that this is this is change in the x-axis, percent change, percent change in in the S and P S and P 500. And let's say on the y-axis, on the y-axis over here, I have the percent change, percent change in the price of IBM in IBM stock. So let's say on one day when the S&P let me give a let me mark this up a little bit. So let's say that this is 1%, 2%, 3%. This is 1%, 2%, 3%. And then this is negative 1%, negative 2, negative 3. Stocks obviously can go down. This is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 for the change in IBM. So just to make it clear what we're talking about, so let's say one day the S&P 500 goes up by 1%, and on that same day, IBM goes up 2%. So we'll mark that point right over there. And then on another day, the S&P 500 goes up 2%, and IBM also goes up 2%. And then on another day, it goes up maybe 1.5%, and maybe IBM only goes up half percent. And so you can imagine. And then another day, let's say the S&P 500 goes down 2%, and IBM goes down 3%. Maybe there's even a day that the S&P 500 went down, but the IB, but IBM stock went up. So maybe it's right over here. Maybe IBM reported some good news despite the rest of the market being down. And maybe there's a couple of days where the S&P went up, but IBM went down because it just maybe there was some bad news. And I'll just throw some other points here. I think you get the general idea. Every one of these points represent a day where we have the percent change in IBM relative to the percent change in the S&P 500. So what would we do here? So this is a sample. These are samples. Each of these, each of these are samples are samples of of I guess we could call it the random of the random or they represent they represent samples of the random variables of the random variables x and y and let me define what x and y are where x x is x is equal to the percent change in the S&P 500 S&P 500 and y and y is equal to the percent change the percent change in the share price of IBM these are both so this is just a sample of it so if we wanted to do a regression line we've seen this before what we would do is we would find the sample mean of both of these variables just based on these n samples here we would find and we would also find the means of their product and also the mean of the x is squared and we would come up with a regression line we'll come up with a regression line that has some slope and some y intercept so let me draw a regression line here maybe it looks something like this let me make it so it, it intersects so it has a noticeable y intercept so maybe our regression line looks like this and this is where I want to make the clarification. I called this regression line y is equal to mx plus b, because it has some slope m, and it has some y-intercept b. This right here is b. But what I want to clarify right here is that this regression line is an estimate of the true regression line between the random variables. If we just kept sampling, if we just kept sampling more and more data, maybe our regression line would change, right? We can take an infinite as long as IBM and the S&P 500 exist for all of time, there might be an infinite number of samples. You can just keep adding samples over here and getting a better and better regression line. So when you only have n data points, you're you're taking a sample of the random variables, and that's why we use this notation. We'll say that this is an estimate of the true slope of the regression between x and y. And this is an estimate of the true y-intercept between for the regression 
of the variables of x and y. And then we can very clearly use the formulas we've been using. That m, that m is equal to the mean of the products of each xy coordinate, the product, minus the mean of x, the mean of the x's, times the mean of the y's. All of that over, all of that over, the mean of the x squareds minus the mean of x minus the mean of x squared. And this is the notation, this is the formula that you've seen in several videos right now. But I want to make it clear, since we are dealing with a sample, and this is the notation for a sample means, this is giving an, an estimate. That's what that hat means. It means it's an estimate of the true slope. And of course, the y-intercept here, the y-intercept here, we're going to get b. b is equal to, well, let me write it this way. We know that. We know from early videos, so we have this formula right over here. And we know that the point, the mean of x and the mean of y is on this line right over here. So you just have to solve for b. So our estimate of b, our estimate of b, of the true regression line, the y-intercept of the true regression line, is going to be equal to the mean of the y's. I could even write it, I could write it like this. The mean of the y's minus whatever we solve for over here, minus our estimate of the slope times the mean of the x's. That right there, so remember, this is just, we're estimating, this is the, reg the best regression for our n data points, for our n samples. Now, if we keep doing this, in theory, if we did it forever, there's some theoretical line here. There's some theoretical line here that is the true regression line. If we were to just sample an infinite number of samples, or as long as these two exist, maybe they exist for the next 500 years, and so we have you know several hundred thousands of samples, maybe there's some true regression line that looks more like this. I don't know. There's some true regression line for those two random variables. And just to show you the difference between this, this kind of estimate of the true regression line right over here and the true one, let me write a formula for that. So if we call that y is equal to mx mx plus b, here we'll say that m is equal to, and now we're assuming this is the true line. Now we, we're assuming that we know the true parameters for these random variables. We don't just have to deal with these, statistic, these statistics, these estimates. We know the true parameters. And so we can say that m is going to be, instead of the mean of x, y, it's going to be the expected value, the expected value of x, y of the product of x, y, minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. So these are the true parameters for these random variables. All of that over the expected value, the expected value of x squared minus, minus the expected value of x minus the expected value of x squared. And then if you want to find the true y-intercept, if you really knew these parameters, it would be equal to the expected value of y minus this m right over here, minus m times the expected value times the expected value of x. Now, just to make sure that we completely understand notations and all of that, if we think of these as, if, if we think, if, if there's a finite population, if there's a true population here, then we could even write it this way. And there are equivalent ways to write it. We could write that m, the true slope of the true regression line, is equal to the mean, the mean of the product of x and y minus the mean of x times the mean of the y's, all of that over the mean of x squared minus the mean of x minus the mean of x squared. If you view these, if, if there was some finite population, then you could say, hey, here's the mean right over here. Or actually, if it's, I guess, some infinite, as long as there is a mean, which is really the same thing as the expected value, then you could use either of these. And of course, the b here is just going to be equal to the mean of the y's minus Whatever you solve for here, minus m times the mean of the x's. Now you can imagine that this is functionally equivalent to this if you if if these data points actually represent the population. If the if your sample if you sampled the entire population, then each of these things, the mean of the product of x and y, is going to be the true population mean. So in general, it won't affect how you're going to do most regressions. And when you do most regressions, you're going to get n data points. It's all you know. You're not going to ever have infinite data points. You're going to have n data points. 
And then you're going to just solve for the mean of the product of your x and y's minus the mean of the x times the mean of the y, so on and so forth. Anyway, hopefully that clarifies things a little bit.